Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We are announcing a feature that lets you create multiple environments for data sources and lets you switch between which one of them is active. So for instance, you can create a production environment for your application. Say, let's say you're working with a Postgres database and you have an app built on Postgres that is connected to your production database. You could also add a staging database to that exact application setup and all queries will be executed against the staging database whenever that switch is made. So with the flick of a switch, you can easily switch between the production database or production environment to the staging database or staging environment without having the hassle of managing all of that yourself. So it's more like using environment variables while building from scratch, only that you now have all of that benefit within AppSmith right from within your browser. And the best part is that this feature works so nicely with the Git version control workflow. Together, they are a powerful combo feature that lets you unlock really advanced capabilities while building on AppSmith. And in fact, there's going to be a video dropping in around next week, so keep an eye on that on the channel that shows you how to use the multiple data source environment, which is the feature we'll be talking about in this video, in conjunction with the Git version control workflow. So you want to see that, get subscribed so that you don't miss that video when it comes out. So what we're going to do today is we're going to look at how to configure multiple data source environments. So we'll build a sample app and I'll show you how to create multiple environments for a single data source. Then I'll show you how to switch between active environments so that you can easily switch your application from, let's say the production environment to the staging environment when you actually want to test stuff. And lastly, I'll show you how to control access to this feature by using the access control tools that are built into AppSmith. All right, so let's get into it. My name is Confident and I'm a developer advocate at AppSmith. Without any delay, let's get started. All right, so I have a blank canvas here and let's imagine I need to build a CRUD app for my end users. We'll be going with Mongo for this example, but like I mentioned, this feature is available across all data sources and all GraphQL and REST APIs that are supported on AppSmith. So let's uh, let's create a simple CRUD app. I'm just going to be lazy and generate the CRUD app by using the generate page from table feature. So I'll create a new data source. And of course, this feature is available for all the databases and also for authenticated REST APIs and authenticated uh, GraphQL APIs. But we'll be going with Mongo for this video. And something you notice is that you now have a production environment as well as a staging environment. Now, keep a pin on that thought and we'll get back to it. So let's call this uh, customers DB. And I'm just going to quickly connect the production environment like you used to doing already. So I'll paste that in. We can test config. That looks good. And I'm going to save this. And uh, we're going to build this using the customers collection. And we want to search by customer name. So I'm going to generate the app. And we have the app generated. The app looks good. We can go back and see that we have a CRUD app that is generated on top of our MongoDB connection. And of course, these are all of the queries that are valuable. I'll make one small change. I'm just going to add one more query. So let's, uh, let's create one more query. I'm going to add a new query that fetches the information of the current database the application is connected to. So I have like a metadata collection that has um, information about what database the app is connected to. So I'm just going to call this DB info. Okay, real fine and simple. It's going to query the DB info collection. And we just want to grab all documents. And we don't need to filter because it's just a single JSON we have returned in the array. So let's grab a text widget and quickly display this over here. Okay, so we have the text here. Uh, I can move this here as well. Uh, seems that has moved. All right. So for this text, what I'm going to do here is let's read what we have in the DB info query. I think this is an array, so we have to pick out the first item and we'll just display the name, like the name of the database. That's uh, that's like that's all we need. This is going to be pulling data, or this is telling us rather that data is being pulled 
from the production database like that's all fine and simple now how do you actually go in to set up a separate data source for your staging environment that's what i'm going to show you right now so i'm going to grab the connection string for my staging environment and now let's head back to our mongodb data source so if i go to data sources okay we can actually go open this up and then you click on the database name right here which in this case is customers db or you go to your active databases instance where you can see all of your active databases you can actually go into edit this and something you notice is that we have the staging environment so the staging environment is where you supply credentials to connect to your staging database all from within the exact same data source which is the customers db data source so i'm going to select the uri and let's paste this in we can test the config and this looks good so i can go ahead to save this and now we have two environments like just like that we have two environments we can actually play around with we have the production environment which the app was built with and we have also gone ahead to add a staging environment which has our test data that we can actually mess around with the question now is how do we switch between what environment is active within the application how do you do that let's talk about that in the next section all right so as i was building you may have noticed something new across the status bar on the application the status bar is this bottom bar on the editor you may have noticed that we now have an environment switcher within it right and right now the environment switcher is set to read data from the production environment so if i had multiple databases say i had the postgres database i have the mongodb database i have a graphql api all queries that will be executed in this application right now is going to fall under the production environment but the moment i go in to switch this into the staging environment it's all going to call queries or execute queries in the staging database and of course like you can see as was shown in the application all of the data we have changed and of course the db info query is now telling us that we are actually querying the staging database which is exactly what we want and when we do go to deploy this application which is something that is quite interesting you notice that we still have the environment switcher shown right here so that we can toggle between what environment we have or we want active within the application so i can go here set it back to production and as you can see this is querying the production environment and we have data coming from production displayed in the application now some of you might be a bit worried because you don't want your end users uh, switching what environment the application is running on and we have tools to actually help you restrict access to what environments are configured in your application. So let's take a look at how you can use the access control tools on AppSmith to make sure only certain users or permitted users have access to this feature while others don't, if that's something you want set up for your application. Let's look at that. All right, so it's really easy to set up role-based access controls for your environment. Um, to do that, you just have to head back to your dashboard. And of course, this is going to be done in the admin settings uh, panel. So under the admin settings panel, go to the access control tab. And here's where you can create custom rules to specify who has access to what. So we'll create a new rule. I'm going to create a new rule and I'll call this uh, data source environments. I'm just going to call it DSC for short. And to configure the environment, you want to go into data source and queries section. And here I'm going to look for my workspace, which is called Confidence Apps right now. And here's where we have environments, right? So we can give access to this rule, access to execute both production queries and also staging queries, right? So I can go ahead to save this. All right, that's done. Now I can go to the users uh, section to select what users have access to this role. So for instance, I can go search for my user. Let's search for confidence and we can edit this user. And of course we can switch to the roles tab and make sure this user has the data source environment role, uh, which has been added right now. So I'm just going to save changes. Or we can create a group 
that has this role added to it and any user who is a part of that group is automatically going to inherit this role or permission so you can also go to groups create a new group um, add a role and let's go add the data source environment role i'm just going to call this uh the dsc dse group all right and we can go specify what users so let's add a user say confidence at appsmith.com all right and we can click on the invite button and that user is added we save changes and boom we can easily control who has access rather to executing queries in either the production environment or the staging environment and i'll let you play around with this feature uh, so that you can fine tune it especially for your use case Awesome. So this has been the multiple data source environment feature or the multi data source environment feature. And it's going to actually open up a lot of capabilities for your apps because right now you can connect to a testing database using your staging environment and make sure all of the tests or data manipulation you're performing are not executed against your production database, which is something you don't want to do, right? So it's all possible right now of using this feature. If you'd love to learn more, we actually have a lot of awesome videos on this topic on the channel. So go check out this video on learning how to use the data source environment feature with the Git workflow, which is also a powerful concept. So go check that out. And if you want to learn more about all the logs, which we are uh, Took a look at briefly, it's actually also related to the access control mechanism. Go check this out here as well. It's nonsense video, so go check it out. All right, that's all for today's video. Till I catch you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.